I'm starting my career right here in the Sport Administration program at the University of Cincinnati. My teachers aren't just stuck in the books. They've been there, they've done the work, and they use the latest research to teach us everything that they know. They connected me to the industry and put me in the shoes of sports business professional. I found countless opportunities right here that took me out of the classroom and into the real world. Cincinnati is a thriving sports metropolis, home to professional teams in football, baseball, soccer, and hockey. Division I college sports programs, top-ranked high school programs, and elite sport events. From day one, we engage with sport leaders across the industry. I worked hand-in-hand -hand with the sales team here at the Cincinnati Reds. I met the president of FC Cincinnati in my classroom right here. I engaged with top brass from the NCAA during the Society of Sport Leaders Student Club Annual Symposium. I helped make this happen. I'm starting my career right here. 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 In the Sport Administration Program at the University of Cincinnati. Hello, everybody. My name is Corbin, and I am the Undergraduate Enrollment Advisor for the College of Education, Criminal Justice, Human Services, and Information Technology. Uh, we are here tonight to talk to you guys about the Sport Administration Program here at the University of Cincinnati. So very excited to be here. Thank you all for attending and, and being a part of our, our event tonight. Uh, like I said, my name is Corbin. Uh, if you have any questions at any point uh, or later on in after the presentation is over, feel free to reach out and give me a call, send me an email. I'll be happy to assist you and field any questions you have uh, about the program. Uh, so I want to introduce some of our guests tonight uh, that we have. We're very excited about this. So we have some faculty panelists, including our program coordinator and associate professor. So Dr. Jason Simmons and Dr. David Kelly, thank you guys for being here tonight. You want to introduce yourselves real quick? Hi, it's Corbin Madison. I'm Dr. Jason Simmons. I'm the program coordinator for the Sport Administration Program. This is my sixth year here at UC. Um, prior to coming to UC, I was at the University of Tampa. I also worked in uh, both professional and collegiate sport in the public relations side of things. Here at UC, I teach our marketing classes and um, my research focuses on uh, sport consumer behavior. Hi everybody, Dr. Dave Kelly here. Uh, I am also the uh, program coordinator for the online master's uh, uh, degree program here at the University of Cincinnati. I've been here since the inception of the program, so I'm into my 10th year. Uh, here at the University of Cincinnati. Prior to my appointment here, uh, I served as an adjunct at Xavier University and then spent the majority of my career uh, as a uh, interscholastic athletic administrator. And uh, super excited that you guys uh, are here uh, with us tonight in this format. And uh, again, any questions uh, relative to the program, uh, either let myself or Dr. Simmons know. And thank you for being here. All right, thank you. Uh, and we do have a, a couple of students here in the program as well. Uh, we got David Olson and Jacob Offenbacher. You guys want to introduce yourselves as well real quick? Yeah, so hi guys, my name is David Olson. I'm a junior in the sport admin program um, with a focus in high school athletics. Um, I've loved my time here at UC so far and I'm really excited to see um, what, what the professors and what Jacob has to say and hopefully you guys are interested in the program. Hey guys, my name is Jacob Offenbacher. Um, I'm a second year student here at the University of Cincinnati. Um, and I've got kind of an open mind as far as things go, currently kind of focusing on college and professional sport. And um, I'm just really excited for you guys because uh, I think I've had a lot of great opportunities here at the University of Cincinnati and it's really broadened my horizons. You're gonna have a lot of great opportunities there. All right, thanks guys. Um, so, uh, first of all, congratulations to everybody. If you're listening and you've applied to UC and you've been admitted this fall, you know, so, uh, you know, hands go out to you. Congratulations to you. Uh, we're very excited for you and, and hopefully we, we do get to see you soon. You know, unfortunately we can't do this in person, but, uh, this is, I guess, the next best thing. And we wanted to provide an opportunity for you to hear from some of the individuals within our program to really help you as you're kind of figuring out the next step for you and what's best for you in your life right now. So. Uh, again, congratulations on that, and um, and let's get started here. So a uh, quick overview of what we're going to do, just kind of do a program overview, letting you hear from the faculty and some of the students within how things are structured, what are the courses like, and, and we'll go over some of those things and, and what's available to students within this program. Uh, we'll talk about life as a student here at UC and in the college and getting to hear from the very students in the program and what life is like for them on a day-to-day -day basis 
And then of course, having time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and post those in the chat box. Uh, we will, uh, depending on the questions, we'll field some of them as we go, or we may save some and uh, review them at the end as well. So we'll make sure to address any questions that come up in the box uh, if you get those posted in there. Uh, so let's go into the program overview. And so um, there's a few things here on the slide that we'll definitely touch base on and talk about, but I'm gonna let right now, uh, let uh, Dr. Jason Simmons and David Kelly talk a little bit about this program, the opportunities, and really what, what students do as far as um, preparing them for various careers. Yeah, I can go ahead and start again. This is Dr. Simmons. Um, you know, our program is focused on the business side of the sport industry. You know, the majority of students that are in our program are majoring in sport administration because they want to work in sport. And that when we think of the sport industry, it's, it's, it's vast. You know, the common things that come to mind are, you know, like the Bengals and the Reds and FC Cincinnati and UC Athletics. But if we think about the sport industry, you know, think about high school athletics and YMCAs and events like the Flying Pig Marathon and the Western Southern Tennis Open and um, all the different college athletic departments beyond just you know big schools like you see your Ohio State but also your Mount St. Joseph's and and NKU's as well all have athletic departments all have administrators that are running the business side of the operation in everything from sales to finance and fundraising to marketing public relations um, compliance um, event management and facility management so what we try to do very early on in our program is expose you to all these different industry segments introduce you to um, different professionals that work in different industry segments. And really, as Jacob was saying, broaden your horizons in terms of what it means to uh, work in the sport industry. I'd imagine that many of you coming into the program are thinking, you know, yeah, I might want to be a general manager or an athletic director or a sport agent. And that's common for students coming into the program because those are the jobs that you hear about on ESPN or that they make movies about. And the truth is there's, those jobs are a nice goal to have, but they're certainly not jobs you're going to be getting as an entry level, you know, uh, you know, job in the sport industry right out of college. So you got to start thinking about what is your path to that goal? What does that look like? What connections are you making? And that's where this real world experience really uh, ties in. In addition to the curriculum, we have uh, practical experience, which are one credit hour, 40 hour working in the industry um, experiences that you'll have in your first, second and third year. And then in your final year, most commonly your final semester, you do a 12 credit hour, 400 working hour internship with the sport industry partner. We're really building up your resume, uh, really making some great contacts and starting to apply the stuff you learn in the classroom in these real world scenarios. Uh, Dr. Kelly, I'll let you uh, jump in here and add, add your thoughts as well. Sure, I mean, you, you covered a great deal there, uh, Dr. Simmons, well done. And uh, one of the other things um, that I, I would also sort of, you know, emphasize is, you know, when you are uh, here in this program, uh, one of the unique things about our program, and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on this even later on in the presentation, is that we bring the professionals to our classes oftentimes. So, uh, for instance, in my uh, sport finance and development class uh, had Jeff Birding from FC Cincinnati uh, all the way ranging. We also have some alums that work for, uh, for instance, uh, Brittany Benedict, who, who works for the Houston Texans. Uh, she manages all the luxury suites for the Houston Texans. So we have alumni that are out there. And so what I like to do is, is, is bring the industry professionals to the classroom, whether they can come physically or in some cases, we bring them in virtually uh, through things like um, Zoom and uh, WebEx video conferencing type of technologies. And uh, I think, you know, it, it, you know, the old adage of, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know, is sort of incomplete. It's who knows you. And so, therefore, when it comes to, you know, getting engaged with our sport administration program, uh, and, I, and I know that perhaps Jacob and David can talk about this a little bit further, but you get more out of it the more you put into it. 
and you have to take personal responsibility for your education as well as getting engaged. And it, it, you know, it's sort of like, you know, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Well, the same sort of thing is true here. Just because you have a degree in sport administration, uh, you know, you, ha you have to set yourself apart. And one of the beautiful things about this program is the practicum as well as the capstone experiences so that you are building your resume, uh, you are making those contacts, but again, uh, you have to be proactive about that. Um, and now one of the things I do like to uh, bring up oftentimes with students is, you know, within this program, we have, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we have several faculty in this program that are also working in the industry currently as well, correct? Uh, yeah, there's adjunct faculty currently working in the industry that are teaching um, a wide variety of classes from Jackie Rowe, who's the CEO of Game Day Communications. Um, one, one of the sections of undergrad marketing this semester is taught by Brittany Booth, who's the Associate Athletic Director of Marketing and Branding for um, UC Athletics. We've had Greg Harrell, the Director of Ticket Sales, teach for FC Cincinnati, teaching our sales class in the past. So not only do all of our faculty have actual sport industry work experience. We're not just teaching from the textbook. We've all worked in the industry. We also have, have um, industry professionals whose full-time jobs are, are working in sport, teaching individual classes in their areas of expertise, and you'll interact with them throughout your time within the program. Okay, very good. Now, I do want to address <clears throat> that real-world experience piece, which is a huge aspect of this program. I hear you guys always preaching about it and talking about, hey, you know, our priority is getting you guys experiences because um, it's really essential to this program, and which is why we, we start it freshman year. You know, you see those practicum experiences are, that are going to begin uh, from the very first year you start, and that's just a part of the part of the program. You know, the bare minimum, this is at least what you'll be doing, and I'm sure students are doing way more than, than just that. Uh, but maybe some of the students, David and um, uh, uh, Jake, if you guys can talk a little bit about, you know, what were some of those experiences since you started the program? What, what did that look like for you guys? Yeah, so for me, like I mentioned, I wanted to focus in high school athletics. So I went back to the high school that I attended. I went to Milford High School about 30 minutes from UC, and I just did my first practicum hours there. But then I realized that I needed to like, you know, spread my wings a little bit more and, you know, see a different school and see a different side. So I ended up interning down at Roger Bacon um, last year in 2019 and then uh, um, Loveland High School in 2020. So I've seen a ton of high schools around the city, big, small, uh, private, public. Um, so, you know, Doc Kelly has been a big part in that and just being able to get out and, you know, get my feet wet in the industry because as doc mentioned uh, who knows you because when you know someone you know they they might be able to be a reference or be someone that you can rely on in the future and i think you know whether it's the faculty or classmates you know just being able to make those connections with even with professionals out in the real world so that you know one day if you need a, a reference or you know someone is uh, you know, able in, uh, working in the industry that you want, you can reach out to them. So, you know, I think it's very important to get your feet wet as soon as you can and just be able to network as much as possible. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would, I think I would say very much the same way. Um, I started off pretty much trying to hit the ground running as soon as I got into school. Um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do or what area I wanted to go into, but, um, uh, I was actually in one of my classes and a speaker came in from the marketing department um, that was in charge of our marketing department at the time. And she said that um, they had opportunities for students to go in and intern. And so I just went ahead and hopped on that because that was the first opportunity that presented itself to me. And then after that, uh, kind of just uh, staying on the attack whenever opportunities came up, you know, I, uh, seen opportunities to hop in and work with FC Cincinnati to kind of get a, a feel for uh, the professional side of things and uh, applying to work with the ticket office so I could see kind of how it goes on the ticket sales side of it, um, helping out with fundraising for student clubs and such like that. And, um, yeah, I don't think I could have said it any better than uh, what David said. I think just keeping in contact with professionals and professors and uh, even the other students you go to class with, uh, that's that's where you're going to hear about opportunities and uh, to um, get references, get chances to um, 
just sort of see new things to try out. And if something piques your interest, there's, you know, there's nothing stopping you from going in and uh, trying it out. So, yeah. Right. Now, um, with as far as the the internship goes, you know, some when students kind of get to that point, we were thinking about more of the the full time internship experience. What does that look like for you guys? You know, there's something that you guys are are hoping to do in the future soon. Is there flexibility for, you know, ex exploring beyond Cincinnati if the opportunity presents itself? Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I think I would be a prime example. Um, Dr. Kelly set me up with an AD out in Ankeny, Iowa. So I will be heading to Iowa for a full year internship. I'll still be in class in the fall taking 12 credits online. But then come the spring of 2021, I'll be uh, mainly focused on that full-time capstone internship. But going out there in the fall, I'll get to see the fall sports, you know, the soccer, football, tracks, cross countries, whatever it is. So, you know, don't limit yourself to just Cincinnati because there are sport opportunities all over the country. And, you know, everyone, everyone's looking and it's a tough in industry to get into. So if you can get that experience and say that you worked 400 plus hours and, you know, put all those skills you learned on your resume, that's huge. So don't limit yourself just to Cincinnati. Yeah. And I'll, I'll yeah. add to that. Um, we, we have interns that uh, like, like David, that, to get their experience outside of the state. Um, and we have, because all of us have this industry experience, all the faculty, we have connections, not just locally. One of the other really neat things is we have a, a very active LinkedIn group for our program with over 800 members now. And that consists of current students, alumni, faculty, industry partners, and seemingly, and guys, it's, it's daily. We're posting volunteer internship and job opportunities all over the country for our students to apply for and take advantage of. So you'll never be at a loss for opportunities to get involved and do stuff. Not only that, our athletic department's awesome. I, I, I would challenge you to find a, a sport administration program with a better relationship with their athletic department than, than we have. You know, we send students to them constantly, first year students, um, and they can get them involved doing event management stuff for football and men's basketball games. You're, you're working the events. You're, you know, you're on the field, on the court, during the games, pulling volunteers to participate in promotional events, throwing t-shirts up in the stands, helping to man the bouncy house over in the kids' tailgate area, whatever it might be. But you're getting that experience, putting it on your resume, showing what you can do. So when it comes time to apply for, for one of those more competitive internships, they know who you are because you've been around for a couple of years. Yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, even one of the other benefits, you know, uh, with just being in Cincinnati, we we do have quite a bit of a, a sport environment in the area. When it comes to just even just being involved in things that happen within the, the Cincinnati area, what kind of events happen that students are able to also be a, be a part of or be involved in in some way? Yeah, there's lots of opportunities beyond just the traditional events that you can you think of with with games that happen um, from, you know, one-off events, some they already mentioned, like the Western Southern Tennis Open and um, a Flying Pig Marathon. But the Reds every uh, uh, winter have Reds Fest, um, and we have tons of students that volunteer at that. FC Cincinnati has their um, FCC3, which is a, a 3K marathon event, um, ending at a sports bar, and everybody that runs watches one of the road games together. Um, Let's see what else is going on. Um, Dr. Kelly or any uh, David or Jacob, you can hop in too. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, there was one actually, um, it was actually a sort of an unfortunate situation because oh, of the COVID-19 yeah. situation. Uh, but we were really primed and set uh, to be part of a significant part of the uh, all-star challenge uh, and an all-star game and slam dunk competition uh, with the Cincinnati Public Schools. And uh, portions of the money that was raised from the sponsorships, which our students would have been involved with uh, in terms of uh, gathering sponsorship money, as well as uh, being involved with the uh, hospitality, as well as the event itself, uh, portions of that money were to go to Project Connect. Uh, which is uh, helping the homeless student population in the Cincinnati Public Schools. So we have, I think, a variety of opportunities that, uh, you know, really emphasize, you know, our commitment 
as a program, not only to the professional and the collegiate community, but to the community in and of itself in terms of our social responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and oh, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was just uh, going to hop in and uh, mention that I we brought up the uh, flying pig marathon, and uh, it's kind of um, it, it is it goes along with the flying pig marathon, but we try to keep the students engaged with it and make it not only just having to be professional and. Uh, uh, skills development oriented base, but we want to make it fun too, because we know that everyone is, we're college students and, you know, everyone wants to go and enjoy it as well. So we actually um, had a competition set up with other local schools, Xavier and NKU. Um, and we were going to have a competition to see who could get the most volunteers to help with the flying pig marathon and um, have a, the, winning schools uh, get like a trophy that uh, goes uh, to the one that has the most students there. Um, and just like the situation with the all-star game, it just kind of got put on hold a little bit because of the uh, COVID-19 situation. But we do try to do stuff like that, that engages the students as well, not just uh, saying to go out and volunteer your time. You, We want people to have fun with it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, so I kind of want to go into um, talking a little bit more about the curriculum of the program. And so I, I do like I like to list the first year courses because you do see as students start taking their you know, major specific courses in their first year, which <clears throat> not every program uh, in the country does that. And so it's important for students to you know, have those kinds of courses in the first year to help them identify, you know, is this really kind of the path for me? So you start getting integrated, you start getting experience, you just start taking those courses right right in your first year, right in the first semester. And so I like to list this, like, like to list these courses, and I would like to hear from uh, the faculty and students as far as, you know, what are, what what happens to some of these courses, and what was that like in your first year with, with taking some of those, with those courses? Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, these, you know, Particularly, we'll start with like the SMGT 1001 Introduction to Sport Administration. As I was mentioned earlier, that course is designed to really hit the ground running and open up your mindset to what the sport industry actually is. Start building your networks, building your connections. Um, that ties into your um, uh, first uh, practicum class, which is the SMGT 10, 1090 class on the right-hand side there where you start exploring the different career options that are there for you and doing research on what those career paths look like, doing informational interviews, um, writing a, a dream paper that kind of outlines, this is my career goal and these are the steps it's gonna take to get there and this is what I have to do you know, in the next year, next five years, next 10 years to help me reach that goal. Um, those other classes that you see in there, you know, from the ethical issues in sports, introduction to, um, um, effective speaking, those type of things, those are built into our program because this isn't just a vocational program where we're just training you to work in the sport industry and that's it. We want you all to be productive members of society. We want you to know how to critically think. We want you to be comfortable speaking. We want you to be able to consider others' point of view when making the decisions and understand how the decisions you make affect other stakeholders, right? The the, the economics of sport class, Dr. Kelly can talk about a little bit more. That's an early class because, you know, sports all about, it's a business. It's about generating revenue. And so understanding how revenue comes in, how revenue comes out, the different um, um, factors that affect an organization's ability to generate revenue, those are all foundational to be, uh, to understand, to progress through the program. Hey, Dave. David or yeah. Jacob, you want to comment on your experience was as a student? Yeah, the student experience for sure. Yeah, you know, I've I've really enjoyed my experience as a student. 
Um, and just all the different classes we've taken, like ethical issues in sport. We did a case study about the Qatar World Cup coming up and, you know, just issues of a normal person we wouldn't think about, but issues that, you know, the Olympic in the, the Olympic Committee's got to deal with and what Qatar had to deal with as a country. Um, I'm taking uh, Dr. Kelly's economics of sport class right now, and I love it. Like, I really didn't understand economics like as a basic class, but now that it's in sport term, I love it. Um, I've enjoyed all of my classes in the sport admin program. And they just, we all get getting different perspectives on things that you might not, not or might not think of normally. Um, I think it's been a, a huge factor into what I would say is my success um, in, in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, there's, it's, the big thing to me has been, it's just really eye opening and uh, honestly, just in general interesting uh across the board because obviously we all come into it as sports fans and wanting to get a career in sport but it really shows you all the different options there are for um people that not only work in sport but all the factors that play into having a career in sport um one class that um at first I had no idea would have existed but honestly turned out to be kind of interesting I think was like psychology of sport which kind of dived into the um uh, what goes into the minds of student athletes and people who work in sport and, you know, just what sorts of uh, challenges that it brings to people. And like they, like uh, Dr. Simmons mentioned with the ethical issues in sport class, that one, um, it really shows like um, how, um, I guess, uh, people, um, I think we tend to think of athletes and uh, sport teams as just, just the business and just as uh, the product on the field. And we don't think of what goes on behind the scenes and sometimes forget that the people there are people. And um, I think it's just a really eye opening experience to show uh, some of the things that go on with that. And it just is a good general preparation for going out into the real world. Right. And, and while we're on this, I want to go ahead and field a couple of the questions that are coming in. One um, regarding the SMGT 1090 course, Mm -hmm. um, question was, and, and I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys explain this, um, but the question is, is that a practicum, uh, meaning an internship or volunteer role, or is it a career research and planning course? Yep, so that's the first practicum course, and there's, we've changed the course up now so that there is a group uh, volunteer experience in that class, um, where you, you'll go out and you'll, you'll all volunteer in an event together. Um, but a large part of that course is also some early career planning. We also, you also, um, you know, submit your first draft of your resume and get feedback on that. Um, work on things like um, the different uh, job search sites that are out there and how to find those sites. And, you know, so how to, how to search for different jobs that are out there. Um, I think they're working on now like elevator pitches. So if you, if you happen to run into, a, you know, an executive from a team, you know, theoretically on an elevator and you have like 10 seconds to talk to them, but anywhere, let's say you're out at a restaurant and you run into somebody or you're at a game and you're at a Reds game and you, you know, you see somebody that works for the organization. What are you going to say to them? How are you going to start that conversation? So we work on some of those uh, professional development experiences as well in that class. And that sets you up well for the 2090, which is the second practicum class, which is that 40 hour um, volunteer experience that can be done with multiple organizations if, if need be, you know, a lot of times there's needs to volunteer at lots of different events that are going on. So it's a really good way to start dipping your toe into the water. Okay, thank you. Now, um, David and Jacob, the, the, there's a free elective that's listed there. The program does have uh, a pretty good amount of electives for students to kind of get um, uh, strategic with their degree. What are some of the ways that you guys are using your electives in your program? You know, I think for, my, for me, I wanted to take just as many sports classes as I could. So uh, next semester, I've got the social history of baseball and uh, the philosophy of sport lined up. Uh, thanks to Dr. Simmons. Uh, we had a long conversation about that. But I'm really excited about both those classes, um, just the philosophy of sport, and just to see, uh, you know, the curriculum and, you know, how I can dive deeper into the industry. And then social history of baseball, you know, just a fun class to learn more about, you know, the game of baseball and what they say is America's pastime. So, you know, I would, you know, definitely hop on that free elective. Don't like just waste it and take a random class and, you know, make the best of that decision with that free elective. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty much in the same boat. Um, I was looking at taking uh, the business of fantasy sport, and it just seems like a very uh, interesting course, not only just from the sound of it, because everyone loves, you know, playing fantasy football, fantasy basketball, but also learning about the economic side of it and um, trying to see what exactly um, it's going to look like in the future, because it's one of the biggest growing areas uh, in sport right now is uh, fantasy sports. And it's just um, really good to be able to utilize that, to be able to focus on something that I think not only interests me, but will also prove useful down the road as um, that continues to grow as an industry. Sure. Um, now when it comes to, um, and anyone can kind of respond to this, but when it comes to you know, developing your program, are students doing anything as far as adding a minor to their program as well? Yeah, so that's something that you'll work with your advisor on. We have an awesome team of advisors down there that work alongside Corbin um, that are there to kind of help you talk through building your, your course schedule, making sure you stay on that four-year plan. And that's everything from when you take your sport admin classes, you know, when you take your electives, and then also considering whether a minor is a good choice for you. We do not require a minor in our program. They're... I think there's a 18, once you finish your credits for the major and then your credits for your um, you know, general core competencies, baccalaureate experience courses, um, I think there's 18 credits left and we don't require a minor. So those become free electives for you. You can use them for a minor and our students that do opt for a minor oftentimes go somewhere in business, whether it's business administration or marketing. We also have a number that go in um, communication and then some that go in a foreign language, areas that they feel can complement their sport administration degrees. And then we have a number of students that don't do a minor either, that they just want those free electives because there's some, you know, there's thousands of classes at UC and there's some just awesome ones that maybe have nothing to do with sport, but you're just interested in learning about something. So, um, you know, your advisor can help you identify what those are um, across other colleges. Got you. Um, and then real quick, before we go on to the next thing, um, David and Jacob, what has been your favorite class so far? <coughs> Marketing. <laughs> well, that's a tough question. Um, I, I, I've enjoyed, I seriously have enjoyed everyone. Um, even if it was an 8 a.m., um, I, I still enjoyed <laughs> it. But uh, I just think seeing differ, differing views and just, you know, getting perspectives and just learning things that I didn't get to learn in high school or that I didn't have any idea about. Um, so I've, I've enjoyed all of them and I'm not going to uh, pick favorites because I'm going to stay in the middle and stay, stay uh, unbiased. Very good. That's a, that's a fair, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. Yeah. I really enjoyed Dr. Simmons sport marketing class. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a, a really, really good time and it's fun as a whole, but, uh, you know, just like David said, there's just so much variety to it, and all the professors there are really good, and I uh, wouldn't trade any of the classes I've taken for anything. Um, they've, I've really enjoyed everything I've taken, um, and I, they always find a way to make it fun instead of just being like a dry, um, you know, like just a lecture or anything like that. It, they find a way to make it fun, and it's all interesting to me. But, yeah, sport marketing. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example, tapping onto what uh, Jacob said there. Um, our professor right now, Dr. Peyton Stenson, that teaches the sport public relations class, or one of the sections of the public relations class, she's adopted a, a model for the class where um, at early in the semester, the class breaks into groups, and you all, everybody, all the groups draft a fantasy football, or it's a spring, so fantasy basketball team, and then that group becomes the uh, public relations team you know, the public relations staff for their team. So they do things like write news releases, um, they have crisis scenario press conferences, mock press conferences in the class, uh, put, a, put together a website and a um, MVP campaign, manage social media, media platforms um, as if it were a real team. And so you're, you know, when you come back to that idea of, you know, real world experience, we're trying to replicate those, those skill sets that public relations professionals use in the real world but also make it fun and something that you can take some ownership in because you're also playing fantasy football or fantasy basketball against your classmates. I think David, you're in that class. Now, Jacob, are you in that one as well? Yeah, I think we're both in there. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We're both in that class. Yeah. 
So just an example of what Jacob was talking about. It's, it's not just lecture. It's not just teaching out of books. You know, we, we really do try to find ways to uh, keep students engaged, keep their interest, um, you know, while applying these real world principles. One of the other things that uh, I, I wanted to touch upon is, you know, it's not just the real world experience of getting out there uh, and, and oftentimes it's uh, and, and the way in which I've designed my uh, uh, sport finance and development class is for students to really get the hands-on experience of working together as a team uh, and the uh, the semester long project is a corporate sponsorship proposal. And what's interesting about that is as they are developing those uh, levels of involvement and tiers uh, and packages of uh, activation assets and so on and so forth uh, within each package, uh, this is actually something that is, uh, has usefulness to it in that uh, one of my former students, Brandon Spaeth, who's now cur uh, currently the assistant athletic director over at Roger Bacon High School, actually uh, grabbed the old notes from my finance and development class and actually incorporated that and uh, has raised a ton of money uh, for Roger Bacon High School. And I know that that also occurs uh, with other courses as well. And so I think that's one of the hallmarks of our program is that not only are you getting real world experience in terms of your practicum, as well as your internship experiences, but then also the, uh, making the content relevant as well as fun as, as David and Jacob have expressed. Gotcha. Uh, one question was about class sizes, uh, specifically the intro, intro classes. How big or typically are the introduction classes? Yeah, your uh, early on sport administration classes uh, will tend to be a little bit bigger. Um, in the neighborhood of, you know, 80 to 100, depending on the semester. And then as you progress through your program and you get up into your 4,000 level classes that you'll be taking in your third and fourth year, um, those are usually capped at 40 students. And depending on the section, sometimes you can have fewer than that. We've had sections with fewer than 20 students in it. So, um, you know, like most programs, you're earlier classes are tend to be a little bit larger. And that's because it's not just majors in there. Other students that major in something else are minoring in this class. Um, it's also open up as a free elective. You know, our introduction sport administration class is a popular class that other students in other pro programs take as an elective because everybody's interested in sport. So um, those classes tend to be a little bit bigger, but that doesn't mean you can't form a relationship with the faculty in there. Um, you just have to be a little bit more proactive about making yourself be known, making sure they know your name, stopping by at office hours um, to, you know, talk one-on-one -on -one with the faculty members, staying after class if you have questions to get clarification. There's definitely ways to stand out on a large lecture class like that. Gotcha. And, and in, in the sport admin program, about how many students are, are in the program? Yep, we have about 320 right now in our undergraduate program. Yep. And we gotcha. have uh, just almost 800 alums of the undergraduate program as well. We are, this, this spring, well, we're technically, whatever ends up happening with commencement, this spring it would be the 10 year anniversary of the first commencement class for sport, of sport administration program. So in just 10 years, we have over um, close to 800 alums. That's awesome. Did you know how many students were planning on graduating this spring? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Usually it's in the 50 to 60 range in, in the spring. Okay, cool. Yeah, someone was just curious about the sizes of that. So yep. thank you. <clears throat> so um, let's see here. The one question was, is this program a holistic view of sport admin? If I wanted to focus on, on marketing, can I pick specific classes for that? Yeah, so we have a every, there's, there's the core curriculum of sport administration that every student takes. Um, every course within the program. If you were specifically interested in marketing, what we would do is, is um, you know, communicate with your advisor and you use some of those elective courses to uh, take some classes over in business administration or in, in, in the uh, uh, College of Business that are more marketing focused. Maybe you're getting a marketing minor. What you would also do is tailor your practicum and internship experiences to um, 
something in, in with a marketing focus, right? That's your opportunity to tailor your education to what you're interested in. And students have free reign to do that as long as it fits within our very broad definition of what sport is. But kind of as I alluded to before, even if you know, your specific career interests are marketing, you're going to interact as, as a marketer with all these various departments, whether it's public relations, whether it's compliance, whether it's finance, you know, marketing doesn't make decisions in isolation of the finance department. So, and marketing has their own budget. So it's important to understand the principles that come from these other classes, how marketing fits within this larger cog of a, sp a sport organization. Um, and then you focus kind of your free elective and minor as well as your uh, industry work on marketing related experiences. And we can definitely help you, you know, from your freshman year, like come in and come in and see me, you know, early, you know, first week of the semester. And I can get you in contact, make some digital introductions or email to you to some marketing professionals all over this, the city and different organizations. Gotcha. All right. Now, uh, kind of switching gears for a little bit. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of life as a student and we can kind of come back and touch base on anything and answer additional questions that we have as we move forward. Uh, but we've talked a little bit about the role of an academic advisor, you know, when it comes to students figuring out if I want to minor in something, how do I structure that? Uh, we do have advisors in our college. Uh, we are, you know, lucky enough to have one of the top rated academic advising centers on campus actually rated by students on campus. And so um, our students in the program are assigned an academic advisor to assist them throughout the program. And so uh, David and Jacob, do you guys want to talk a little bit about the role the academic advisor plays for you guys? Yeah, um, I think the academic advisors played a huge role. Um, just for me, I've had a couple different academic advisors in, in, in my three years at UC. So the turnover hasn't been great. So I've not been able to develop a, you know, like a, a long lasting relationship, but I, I was introduced to Katie Savage um, probably right before spring break and before this COVID-19 outbreak. And, you know, I was able just to sit down and just talk and see how I wanted to arrange my schedule so that it would be the way I wanted it and that it would, you know, balance with my work life out in Iowa next when I'm out there in the fall. So I think, you know, developing a relationship with your advisor is huge. Uh, you, know, you don't have to see them often, but, you know, if, there, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to them in an email or set up a meeting just so that you can get that in-person instruction and they can, they can help you to their fullest extent. Yeah, I would definitely say the same thing pretty much. Um, I think, um, I, to be honest, when I first started at UC, I didn't utilize my advisor enough. I just uh, – didn't go in there until I needed to switch classes and stuff like that. But over the last, um, I would say this semester, I started uh, going to my advisor uh, more often just to be able to talk about what I should do over the remainder of my uh, college career, figure out a plan that's good for me, um, not just in terms of getting out of school as fast as I can, but, or, you know, having success there, but balancing the two of them because, at first, I was just trying to figure out how to save money, but later on, I decided, you know, I think I need to really utilize my education here, and I was sitting down with my advisor, and she really helped me to develop a plan that fits for me and will uh, uh, really help me fulfill um, not only my requirements to graduate, but also to um, uh, get a meaningful, full experience here and not just rushing out the door or anything like that. So just, I would say stay in touch with your advisor and do everything you can to keep that relationship with them going instead of just going in there when you need to, um, to register for classes because they are there to help you and you just, just make sure you know that because they're there to support you in any way they can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so campus life, obviously campus life is very different right now than probably what <clears throat> you guys were expecting it to look like about this time and uh, wishing we could do all of this, you know, presentation stuff with, with the students in person right now and on campus, but unfortunately can't do that at the moment. And so, um, but we still wanted to provide an opportunity for students to give some sort of perspective on what it's like being on campus, especially your first year if you're living on campus. 
uh, you know, what are the dining halls like? What was dorm life like if you were living in the dorms? What what was the, what was the day to day uh, kind of situation for you guys when you were when you were living on campus? I didn't live in the dorm. I'll let Jacob take that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually am the opposite. I lived in a dorm for two years, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a really good experience. You, um, are kind of put into a new space with people that you didn't really know before. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a learning experience, you know, being, uh, far from home and being around new people and stuff like that. But you really start to develop a good friendship and relationship with your roommates. Um, at least I did. I've never had a bad experience with roommates that I've had. And, um, you know, you have floor events and stuff like that that go on in the dorms and, you know, they try to make it a fun experience for you while you're in there. And, uh, they're, um, I would say also like with the dining halls, they had, a they give you some different options throughout, like, um, you know, just to, just to keep it interesting and, uh, give you different, I don't know, just food options. So you're not eating the same thing every day. They mix it up with a lot of different stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, maybe even David, did you, so did you commute or what did you do, David? Yeah. So my freshman year I commuted and then the past two years I've lived in a house off campus with a bunch of buddies. Um, you know, it's probably, a 20 minute walk to campus at max, but that, that was, if it was a cold and windy day, I could probably be at a campus in, you know, 10 to 15 minutes now. So I enjoy living off campus with buddies. Um, you know, you're, you're not like in a dorm and you're able to have your car there if there's street parking available and, you know, just being able to walk to campus with them all at the same time and, you know, not have to worry about differing schedules. I've only got one roommate and our schedules were pretty much the same. So, you know, we're up at the same time and it's not like I had to worry about someone getting up and being loud. So I've enjoyed uh, the campus or the uh, off off campus housing and, um, and, you know, I could come home whenever I needed back to Milford just because it's 30 minutes up 71. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, a lot of things happening on campus as far as student organizations. What are some things that you guys have been involved with uh, that you really enjoyed? Yeah, on the screen you see there, Society of Sport Leaders. Um, that's been a big thing, uh, just being involved with that, uh, going to their meetings. They have guest they have guest speakers like our former AD, Mike Bone, or people from the Cavs. But then outside of that, I'm involved with Greek life. Um, and then uh, so, you know, just doing that, being able to meet new people that way that aren't sport admin uh, studying people, but, you know, just be able to develop those friendships that way. But I think Society of Sport Leaders has played a huge role um, into my academic career, and it actually helped me land my internship at Loveland High School last year. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I would I would say pretty much the same thing. We uh, I've been heavily involved with Society of Sport Leaders for the last two years. I'm actually on – the executive board serving as the director of development. So I'm dealing with the sponsorships and the fundraisers and all that sort of stuff. And just like David was saying, we uh, provide a lot of professional development opportunities. That's what we're there for, uh, for students to be able to uh, get opportunities to meet with people. Like uh, this semester, we've had our um, annual symposium, which is an opportunity for, um, uh, we have a panel to go in and, talk to students about working in the sport industry and uh, we have a little luncheon with uh, members of our alumni base that can uh, provide networking and uh, potential career opportunities and a keynote speaker that will uh, uh, give a speech on uh, whatever topic of their choosing that relates to their uh, career. Um, like this past semester, we had uh, Dr. Richard Southall, who is a professor of the University of South Carolina. He was talking about um, college athletics. And um, that's the main one I've been involved with. I've just kind of uh, hopped back and forth between a couple other little groups on campus. There's tons of clubs out there for you to check out. Um, I didn't really stick with any of them too terribly long just because um, I got involved heavily with work and SSL. But, you know, I've gone and sat in with the astronomy club and, uh, uh, they have an ice cream, not ice cream, excuse me, uh, milkshake club on campus and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of stuff out there. If you have some sort of interest, there's probably a club there for you, and I would definitely recommend checking them out. Gotcha. 
Um, so experiential learning is also obviously really big. Uh, we've talked quite a bit about that, and that's just going to be a, a, a big part of the culture, just that experiential learning is going to be uh, from day one, you know, an opportunity for students. And so um, was there anything that you guys wanted to add about this aspect of the program? You know, if there's anything I'd add, I think, you know, being able to get our boots on the ground day one is is extremely important, you know, because we're coming out of high school and then boom, you know, we're getting professional experience in, you know, whatever field it may be, whether, whether it's marketing or, you know, high school athletics, whatever, you know, as we see here on the screen, the, uh, the girl from Kentucky Speedway, you know, that's only an hour down the road. So, you know, being able to take advantage of those partners that aren't even in Cincinnati, but they're still close. I know a lot of people have associated themselves with the Dayton Dragons and uh, the uh, Florence Yalls, as they're now called. Um, so, you know, just being able to have those opportunities at, the, at our fingertips is, is huge. And whether it's baseball, football, soccer, whatever it is, I'm sure we can find a, a, a place to get in um, no matter what it is. Right. Um, international yeah. experiences. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jacob. Oh, I was just going to say, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, just about going out there and uh, taking that step and doing it yourself. So that's, that's pretty much about it. Gotcha. Uh, international experiences, you know, we definitely encourage that. There are, there are going to be opportunities uh, for students that want to take advantage of that. And there on the screen is just a few of the places we've been. Was there anything that you guys wanted to kind of uh, expound on when it comes to um, international opportunities? No, I, I personally haven't done one of these uh, international trips, but obviously sport is a worldwide thing. Um, obviously, they're like the sports we focus on here in America might be different than what it is over in Spain or Ireland. But, I mean, sports are a global thing. So if there's an opportunity um, somewhere else in the world, I would say take it. And, you know, that would be a great thing to put on your resume that, you know, you – you did you studied abroad in Spain or you got to see SC Barcelona or something like that so if an opportunity arises for you to go abroad I would say full-on take it and um, hopefully you know you can whatever means necessary that you can acquire so that you're able to have that opportunity yeah I'll add yep, I, I was pretty our, much this thing I, I took our last group um, that went to Spain in 2018 um, and there were 16 students that went and you know, one, the class counts as a sport administration elective course. So from that perspective of, you know, you know, checking something off the checklist for your academic career, it satisfies that. But, you know, there's an additional cost to go, obviously, because you're, you know, paying for air travel and hotels and all that. But to the access that you get to things, you know, we went to a, we went to Madrid and Barcelona, and we went to a Real, Real Madrid game. Then we went back the next day and got a tour of Bernabeu, uh, Real Madrid Stadium. When no one was there, we sat in the Real Madrid's locker room. We got to go on the field. Um, we talked to professionals that work for Real Madrid. We got to tour Camp Nou when we went up to Barcelona. We went to the Madrid Open. But then we also explore cultural things as well. We went and got to um, participate with the Castellers. Um, there are, these are the people that build uh, human pyramids, uh, you know, 10 people tall standing on top of each other. And we actually got to participate in that. It was, it was a blast. Um, we do cultural stuff like we did a cooking class. We visit famous buildings like palaces, old churches to get architectural tours. Um, we eat all sorts of different types of food while we're there. Um, and we met up at um, Universidad Europa in Madrid and um, had a lecture series from professors um, that teach sport management in Spain. Obviously, the, the lectures were in English, but it's really an all-encompassing trip. They usually last anywhere from 11 to 14 days, um, and they happen in May, right after the spring semester ends, is when you, you actually go on the trip. Cool. Um, so we have a few minutes left here uh, to kind of just fill some of the last minute questions and anything that kind of comes in. And so there was one question, someone was wanting to describe the, the capstone internship a little bit more, uh, you know, is that similar to co-op, full-time work experience or what? Yeah, so a, a co-op program is like an engineering and the College of Business that you'll hear the word co-op used. The co-op is a formal arrangement that the university has with an organization where they're guaranteeing placement of students within the, within the program and those positions are paid. Um, we don't have formal co-op experiences in sport administration and I would, 
I, it's not a very common thing you're going to see at any university. What the internship program is designed for is to, as we mentioned earlier, get you that experience related to, you know, your, your interests. I'd say in the six years I've been here, we might have had two people that haven't been able to get an internship. And it was from issues within their control that um, they regularly didn't take advantage of. 99.999% of our students are successful in getting internship positions. In fact, in the uh, SMGT 3090 class, which is the third practicum course, um, you do uh, a lot of internship capstone prep for that class. So you talk about you know, specifically what the internship entails, what the assignments are going to be, the documents you need to get signed by um, on-site supervisors to actually get approved to enroll in the internship course. And then the course itself, as I mentioned, is 400 work hours that counts for 12 college credits. Um, but beyond that, you're doing things like revisiting your um, dream career paper that you wrote in your SMGT 1090 course and updating it. You are doing a, a project for your organization above and beyond the, uh, the, the regular work duties that you, you do. And you present that back to students who are in the 1090, 29, and 39, 3090 courses at the end of the capstone experience. You're writing uh, reflection papers on, um, on the leadership styles you're witnessing and commenting and critiquing those leadership styles on ethical issues that you encounter and how the organization treated those ethical issues. So it's a lot of returning back to the curriculum and how are you seeing it unfold in your internship experience. Cool. All right. Thank you for that. Um, I do want to post our social media up here on the screen. So if anybody wants to follow any of our additional channels, uh, feel free to do so. We'll be posting additional things on there throughout the year. <clears throat> uh, and then again, my number and email is there on the screen as well. So if anyone has questions and you're watching this later, feel free to send me an email. Be happy to answer any additional questions or if you want to get connected with anybody that was here tonight, like our program. Uh, coordinator, faculty members, students, you know, be happy to get you connected and answer any additional questions um, that you may have. So, and yeah, uh, Jason, you answered that question perfectly, apparently. That was, that was exactly what they wanted to know. So, good job, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also say one more um, social media account. We have a, the, the LinkedIn group is, is for students who are sport administration majors. So, you know, you know, once you're officially declared as a major, you can request to join our LinkedIn group. And that's just, you know, you just search um, UC SPAD, UC SPAD on LinkedIn, and then you can request to join the group. We also have a very active Twitter account at UC underscore SPAD, SPAD. And you can go check that out and look at, um, you, can, you can go through the history of posts or just look at the media that's on there. And you can see all sorts of pictures and videos that we posted over the past year, just scroll back through. We took a group of eight students down to the college football ch championship game in New Orleans this year, the um, LSU Clemson game, and they they worked the four days leading up to the event and then went to the game. Um, we took a group of students to Indianapolis for the NFL Career Conference at the NFL Combine. Um, we're on uh, um, um, in, in February, we had a um, uh, a, a screening of the Marshawn, new Marshawn Lynch documentary and talked about issues of race and sport and the intersection of race, culture, and politics. So um, there's a lot of things that we do beyond just the, the curriculum and, the, and the, the program and the classes itself to help you not only develop professionally and network, but grow as an individual and um, kind of expand your thinking or challenge the way you might think of things um, to make you a more critical thinker. Gotcha. All right. So uh, we are at our time here. So I wanted to thank everyone for being here and attending uh, and just being um, interactive within our presentation. Hopefully this was informative for you and helped answer some questions and got a little bit of the taste into the culture uh, to our college and what we're about here, uh, really about the students and helping them be successful in all that they do. Um, thank you to our panelists, uh, Dr. Simmons and Dr. Kelly and Jacob and David, thank you all for being here tonight and talking about the program. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, thanks guys. Y'all have a good night. All right, take yeah. care. Bye.